Okay, you guys, this is problem 9 from chapter 8 of the Nielsen book. And in this problem, we are given uh, the voltage drop across the capacitor, the current through, the initial current through the inductor. The inductance is 4 Henry's. We, have, uh, we don't have resistance. We have part of a general equation. It's, we have v, uh, d1t e to the negative 500t plus d2e to the negative 500t v. And you should recognize, well actually before we go there, we have to find r, resistance, capacitance, the coefficients d1 and the coefficient d2. And in part B, we need to find the current, the general equation for the current through the capacitor. So, taking a look at the general equation for the voltage, you can see that that takes the format for the um, critically damped response. And if this had been A1 and A2, because those are just dummy variables, uh, it's really easy to recognize because it says D1 and D2. And it actually matches a um, one of the coefficients or or matches the book, but and it said a one and a two, which are the dummy variables used for the overdamp response. You should still recognize that this is a critically damped response because of the t times the e in the first in the first phrase of the the general equation, and because the alphas and the, the, the alpha and the omega naught are equal, which is the condition for um, a critically damped response. So regardless of the dummy variables, you should look at that and say, oh, that's a critically damped response. Um, remember, this um, with the overdamped response, the S1 and the S2 are different because alpha and omega naught are not equal to each other. Okay. So, knowing that alpha is equal to, well first, alpha is 1 over 2 RC, and omega naught is equal to 1 over root LC. What information do we have? In this one, in both cases, we have the omega naught and the alpha, and in both cases, they are 500. In this one, we have we don't have R and we don't have C, so we have two equations, or two unknowns in that equation. We can't solve it. This one, we do have inductance. It's four Henry's. The only thing we don't have is capacitance. So this is the one we're going to solve first. Four Henry's. Then a square both. And that's going to give you five hundred squared. One over four Henry's. C. Swap the places of this capacitance and 500 squared. And put that into your calculator. And you should come up with a value of 1 microfarad. Now we have this piece of information and we can solve for resistance. Swap these two around and give us R is equal to 1 over 2 times 500 times 1 micro. Put that into your, your calculator and you should come up with 1 kilogram. So now we need to find D1 and D2 for part A. And the coefficient equations for a critically damped response is R, D of 0 is equal to D2, and DV, DT is equal to D1 minus alpha D2. These are the two coefficient equations that we have. Well, this one right away we know because we were given that at the very beginning of a problem. 
the voltage at time zero is eight volts. So over here and the eight. So now we have alpha and D2. Alpha, remember, is 500. D2 is 8. And so this is going to be 4,000. So what is dvdt? I'm going to save you some trouble. At first, I tried to take, the, um, to take the derivative of that. You use a simple, you do a simple product rule. And then evaluate it at time 0. Because when you do that, then you end up with just d1. Because we know what, uh, at time 0, this becomes e to the power of 0 and goes away. It becomes 4,000. So once you do all that and you reduce it, you end up with d1, d. You take the derivative, evaluate it at, ten zero, uh, at, at 0. You end up with a statement of d1 minus 4,000 is equal to d1 minus 4,000, which is a true statement. but not useful at all. So, um, so don't do that. So what are our options for finding dvdt because you need it in order to solve d1? Go back to chapter 6, at the end of chapter 6, take a look at your inductor equations and your capacitor equations. You have um, V is equal to L D I D T, and you also have I is equal to C, D, B, D, T. Now, you could use either of those to solve it because all you need is some kind of D, X, D, T. Like we have V, right? That's 8 volts divided by um, L, right? So all we need is to solve for D, I, D, T. Um, or, yeah, so to solve for D, I, D, T. So we could do that and put it in here. That would work. Or the other way is we could do I is equal to C D V D T, right? Solve for um, D V D T as I over I C over C. So D V D T. Hold on, do I take that back? No. You would have to get you have to get the dvdt. This has to be dvdt. Since we're solving for, we're using v. So this has to be dvdt. So actually, this won't work since it's didt. So we do end up having to use i is equal to c dvdt. Um, so then dvdt is equal to i c over c. Okay. So now we have to find IC. We use KCL to do that. IC is equal to negative IR minus IL. And IR is equal to V over R. And V is 8. And R is 1K. And then this is minus negative 10 millis. So you end up with negative 8 milliamps plus 10 10 milliamps, so that's going to be equal to 2 milliamps. So this becomes 2 milliamps over 1 microfarad. And that, when you evaluate that, you end up with 2K. So that ends up being um, 2,000, 2 kilovolts per second. So now you just add 4,000 to each side, and you come up with D1 is equal to 6,000. So D2 is 8, D1 is 6,000. Now on to part B. So in part B, we have to find I sub C. And here, we only have one choice. That's going to be I sub C. That's going to be C, D, 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 T. C, we know it is one micro. One 
multiply that by 6,000, the derivative of, okay, so take the derivative of that. Hold on, to replace that with 6K. Okay, so let's do this on the side. Derivative of T e to the negative 500 T is the product rule. We have T times negative 500 e to the negative 500 T, right? Then you take, add that as e to the negative 500 T times the derivative of that, which is just one. The derivative of T is just one, so we have negative 500 T e to the negative 500 T plus e to the negative 500 T. So, now that's going to be multiplied by 6,000, both, both terms. We have 6,000 um, times negative 500 e to the negative 500 T in the first term. Now we have the second term is plus 6,000 e to the negative 500, 500 t. And the third term is 8 times derivative of that, which is negative 500. Negative 500 times 8 is negative 4,000. So negative 4,000 e to the negative 500 t. So negative 4,000 e to the negative 500 t. Okay. Um, these two terms come together. 6,000 minus 4,000 is 2,000. This becomes 2,000. Okay, so take that. We have one micro. So that's 10 to the negative 6 times 6,000 times negative 500. First term is negative 3, coefficient of that. And then we have 10 to the negative 6 times 2,000. And the second term is 0 0.002. So that gives us negative 3 e to the negative 500 t plus 0 0.002 amps, 002 e, oops, t e, t e, 0 0.002 e to the negative 500 t amps. So, we put our final answer in the form of milliamps. This is going to give us I C. Okay, so part B. I C of T is equal to negative three thousand T e to the negative five hundred T plus 